Hi everybody, my name is Angie, welcome to my channel. Uh, so today I'm gonna be making a dog bed using an old shirt. Um, so upcycling a shirt into a dog bed. Um, I've made a few of these before and dogs love them. Um, they're usually probably only good for dogs, maybe like 20, 30 pounds or smaller, um, anything bigger than that. And even if you get like a, a 2X or, you know, like, a, 3x, 4x, whatever shirt, it, it just doesn't work out very well and you can't make them big enough for a dog bigger than like 30 or so pounds. Um, so this one is intended for um, my sister's dog um, who's about 20 pounds, she's like a beagle mix. Um, so I am using um, an extra large, it's like a men's extra large shirt um, and that is what I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, the only supplies that you need really are basic sewing supplies and then a long sleeve shirt, um, you know, cotton or something, and then um, like a bag of polyfill. Um, so this is one, I think I picked this up at a uh, garage sale or something, something like that, a bunch of this. So um, yeah, so that's all you need, a shirt and a bag of um, polyfill or cotton batting you know, something like that something to stuff it with um i have used i tried in the past before to use like fabric scraps to fill it um you know as a way to use up my fabric scraps and not let them go to waste like the tiny little pieces and it got super heavy and it wasn't really washable um the fabric i did not anticipate it getting that heavy that quickly uh, but it was very heavy so it didn't work very well so um if you have a dog that likes to tear up their toys, another option to make this like really zero waste is an old shirt. And when they tear up their dog toys, or if you have to get rid of them, uh, keep the batting or the stuffing from inside of the toys. I have a big bag of that as well, which if I run out of this from the garage sale, um, I might grab some of that as well. And it's just stuffing from inside of their toys that they destroyed over the years. Um, and I just keep a big bag of it and save it for when I want to make more dog toys or a bed or something like that. So that's another option. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so got my shirt laid out here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm not going to flip it all the way inside out. I don't need the sleeves to be inside out. We can go ahead over to our sewing machine and we're just going to go ahead and around the collar here. We're just going to go ahead and stitch that closed. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this just so it doesn't shift around too terribly much. Or clip it, whatever. Okay, and then I'm gonna go from this side just cause I wanna come in under the, uh, under the tag there. So just right next to the edge of the collar, I'm gonna go ahead and, Christopher got away from me from my foot, pred foot pedal. And I'm just stitching right next to the edge of the collar here. And I back stitched. So I'm gonna take these clips out. I guess it doesn't matter if I trim the threads, but. Okay, and then when we do that, that closes up that top there. You can make it look, you know, a little prettier if you want, but you know, I'm not too worried about it. That closes it up. That's what we're worried about. Okay. And then the next step, once we have that neck hole closed up, what we're going to do is lay it out flat and you can mark this if you want with like an erasable pen or chalk or something, if it's easier for you, I just eyeball it, but we're going to go ahead and from the bottom of one armpit, we're going to go ahead and sew from there to the bottom of the other armpit. So what that's going to do is create a nice line here for the edge of the bed so that we can stuff this and circle the arms around and it'll go ahead and create like that border around it. So we'll just go ahead and sew from one armpit to the other. Okay, and we'll go ahead and back stitch. This is kind of thick here. 
gonna have to tug at it to get it through. Okay, let me find my other edge so I'm heading in the right general direction. So about here, okay. So I'll just stitch a little bit and then make sure I'm still heading in the right direction. At the other corner and we'll go ahead and back stitch. Okay, now at this step, we're gonna go ahead and get the body of it right here filled in with um, some of the batting. So we'll go ahead and get that stuffed here. So I'm just kind of pulling it apart as I go. It just kind of helps it fluff because when it's in the bag, it is pretty well stuck together. Let's see us take that, fluff it out, and it goes a lot further. And you just kind of stuff it as much or as little as you want. For me that's good and you want to leave just a little bit of space down on the bottom here so that we can get this all sewed up so i think that's good so we'll go ahead and yeah we'll go ahead and leave that okay so now that we have it all stuffed you want to determine from here which side you want to be the top that you're going to be seeing and which side you want to be the bottom so if you have an old shirt that has like a logo here do you want it to be visible and the dog is like laying on the logo or do you want it to be underneath on the bottom. Um, so for me, this has a little like the polo logo on it. Um, and if I have it up like this, then it'll be visible while the dog is laying here. And I mean, it's not that big a deal, but I'm going to make that the back so that like it can be, you know, up against the wall or whatever. So I'm going to have this as the back of it. So it would end up like this with the logo back out here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flip it back so that the outside of it is facing towards you. And then we're gonna go ahead and just start uh, pinning or clipping the arm. And we're gonna attach it to this, stitch it down onto it, just sewing it around in a circle so that both of the arms come together and end up meeting here. And we're just gonna go ahead and doing this is gonna kind of sew up the bottom closed as well. So everything will kind of meet like that. So let me go ahead and clip this together. And then this part of it, um, it's going to look a little funky. I mean, it's not going to be the prettiest, but it'll definitely get the job done. Um, but we're just going to stitch very close to the edge over here. And then when we turn it the other way and the dog's laying inside of it, it's going to be kind of shoved down in the, um, like into the wall of that. So you won't see that seam. And I'm just kind of pinching the fabric and pulling the batting away from it so that I'm not stitching through the batting. And I'm just following the side seam of the shirt around, at least for now, and matching up the side seam of the sleeve. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and, you know, I think I'm gonna cut the corner a little bit. I might end up trimming this little piece off here, but I'm gonna cut the corner just so that I make sure that I have enough room here for these to meet. They're gonna meet in the center here. And I need to account for a seam allowance. 
I'm gonna cut out like maybe a, a two inch little piece there and just kind of cut off that corner. <clears throat> so then I will pinch the bottom pieces together and loop this sleeve around and clip there. <clears throat> and now I'm pinching the body of it closed here and bringing the shirt continuing around. side now. Oops. Okay, and then again, I'm going to cut off about like a two inch square off of the corner here and just kind of cut off that corner and leave that little flap of the bottom just so that I have enough room for the arms to meet. And actually I might have to do a little bit more than that. Tuck all of this in. Just clipping the bottom of it so I can see how far I need the arm to go. Just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so this sleeve goes over to here. I need this sleeve to overlap just a little bit for a seam allowance. So we're gonna come to here. And this will be different depending on how big your shirt is and how long the sleeves are. If you happen to get uh, like an extra tall shirt or something that has a lot longer of sleeves, then um, you might not have to cut the corner. This one, the sleeves are a little short. Okay, so on this side, I, you know, did a little piece like that. Okay, and then I am, I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, so this might be hard to see, but I am doing it from the, this is the bottom of the bed here. So the sleeve is up over here. And I'm just going, I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as like my seam. <clears throat> and I'm just stitching my way around, making sure that I'm catching both sides of it. Some of these seams can get kind of bulky, so go slow. You know, break a needle. Okay, now on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this little tail off so that I can see a little bit better what I'm doing since I opted to sew from this side. And this is just um, like typical t-shirt material, so it's not gonna fray. So it doesn't matter if you cut this. All right, so now I'm just making sure that it is that I'm going to catch everything and just work my way around that curve. Like I said, it may not be the prettiest looking thing, but it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be sufficient for a dog to lay in or cat, whatever. 
right, I'm coming up to the cuff of the sleeve, which that is a, a rather bulky seam, so I am gonna go extra slow. Over that cuff. Okay, and actually, I went ahead and left a little bit of the seam or of the um the sleeve. Um, I think it's going to be easier to finish this all up if I don't sew that just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and skip a little piece and then start sewing on the other side, maybe leave like an inch on that side too, and then just keep working my way around. Okay, this side I think I'm gonna go starting on the sleeve, put the sleeve side on top. kind of heavy and pulling a little bit so even with the clips in it is kind of um, pulling at the bottom of it so every time I like I'll take a few stitches and then just kind of readjust making sure that I am catching both sides cut this flap off here. Okay. There's a little bit of extra space on this, so I am kind of having to fold it a little bit. Almost making like a pleat in order to get it to all fit in this section of the sleeve. Really, you just want to make sure that you're catching everything so that the, the polyfill batting stuff does not all come out. You can always trim it down to make it look a little nicer later. But again, this is going to be all hidden once you get it all filled up. Okay, so I have the two pieces open here that I haven't sewed. I left about an inch on either side of the sleeve here. And the bottom of this is still open a little bit, so we'll have to finish that up. But that's what we got so far here. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and stuff through the sleeve. So we're going to go ahead and all the way around fill in um, the rest of the batting and just stuff it as, as full as we want into the rest of the bed here. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I did end up needing quite a bit more of the polyfill, so I ended up using the scraps from my dog toys that they have torn up. I had a big old bag that I've saved up over the years, so I used a bunch of that. And then you do want to, the very ends here, you do want to kind of overfill those 
because once we stitch everything back up, this is going to be all loose here because we needed the batting out of the way. So we're going to have to work it back over into these spots. So we need these ends to be a little overfilled. So I'm going to do just a little bit more. Okay, so it is all stuffed. So all we got to do is stitch these all together, close up that very bottom of this, and we're good to go. So we'll go ahead and get that stitched up. Okay, so the way that I sew these up, you can definitely hand sew it if that is a little bit easier for you, because um, it can get a little tricky. Spilling. So what I like to do is, like I said, kind of shove the batting out of your way so that it's not getting in your way of your stitches. But we're going to go ahead and just kind of match up these seams here. So the seams of the sleeve, we're going to go ahead and match up like the bottom, like where they would kind of meet. So about there. So I'm going to go ahead and from the inside of the sleeve, I'm going to put the outside of the sleeves right sides together or the outside of the sleeves together. And then from the inside, I'm going to go ahead and stitch that closed. And I'm just going to continue around in a loop as much as I can do before you get to the other end and it kind of stops you because you're sewing it closed. So we're going to back stitch. And you just want to make sure that the other side of the sleeve is tugged out of the way here. And we'll just go around in a circle. We'll flip this as we go, making sure that we're sticking with right sides together. This gets a little tricky. It's hard to tell what you're doing. Okay, here we go. Grab this. And I just keep grabbing the sleeve from underneath and pulling until it's too tight and I can't pull anymore. But we're getting there. Drop my thread here. Okay, so in the sleeve here, that leaves just a little spot here that we're going to go ahead and have to sew from the outside. So I'll just kind of flip it around. Hard to see inside here, but we're going to flip it around in here and just sew this right sides together. And this part, it might be easier to just hand sew it. So whatever you want to do. just winging it. Probably would be easier to hand sew, but we'll just do it this way. Why not? Now my dogs are getting all antsy behind me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and flip it over. How many kind of threads we got here? Every time I hit record, my dogs start making noise. Okay, 
And then we just need to take that extra batting that we had bunched up into here and just kind of maneuver it back into the handle. Keep finding thread that I didn't trim. If I trimmed as I went, that would make a little more sense. Don't worry about that. Okay. So then all of this extra that's in the arms here, we just need to maneuver that in so that it kind of loops around and it isn't so empty in this spot here. All right, so now this is the top of it. And as you can see, that seam that we sewed um, the handle or the arms onto the body of it, when we have it all kind of curled in like that, you don't even see it. It's all kind of shoved into the sides here. So you don't even see that seam. And now it's just a cute little bed for your dogs. Like I said, it ain't the prettiest, but dogs, cats, they love these. I'll see if I can figure out. I have a picture of the very first one that I sewed for my husband's cat, little Zoe, um, several years ago. Uh, but animals love these and it's a nice zero waste project. Um, so there we go. And if you are going to make one, make sure to put that in the comments down below. Let me know if you're having trouble with it or anything, or if you've made something similar like this in the past. Um, if you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to su subscribe to stay tuned for other videos. All right. Bye. Hey girls, you want to try out Daisy's bed? Okay, thank you. That's not what I wanted. You need to try the bed. Come here. Here, pun. Okay, fine. Playtime. Here we go. Dogs appreciate it. They don't care what it looks like.